Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Aimstone channel. Today is Monday, it's a new week, so let's get back to work. As always, let's go ahead and start this video with Bitcoin market because <laughs> as we can see, Bitcoin had a decent pump overnight as of the time of this recording bitcoin is about sixty nine thousand seven hundred dollars yesterday bitcoin was wiggling around um sixty seven thousand seven hundred bucks so technically bitcoin gained more than two thousand dollars per single coin overnight or oh, that would be roughly slightly less than two percent so obviously that is good and from technical standpoint bitcoin was forming this uh, triangle <laughs> and today bitcoin price action Firstly, broke the resistance of this triangle, which is obviously fantastic news. So maybe we will see 70, possibly even higher today. Let's see. If you zoom out a bit, take a look at this uh, one weekly Bitcoin chart, Bitcoin being at $69,000. It means that um, we're not so far away from all time high. All time high took place a couple of months back where Bitcoin touched almost uh seventy four thousand dollars so right now bitcoin would need to gain slightly more than five thousand dollars to make new all-time high yes it's a possibility for bitcoin to beat all-time high even in the next few weeks definitely but the good news is right now bitcoin being about 69k and 700 dollars so that being said, uh, Bitcoin is currently higher than April 2021 top, where Bitcoin was about 64k, <laughs> and it's also higher November 2021 top. This is when Bitcoin hit $69,000, and uh, that was the previous all-time high. So yes, Bitcoin already conquered two tops. Now the third top, which is all-time high, possibly may take place in the next couple of weeks. Let's see. And from a technical standpoint, as we can see, 2022 was that uh, vicious bear market. So from a technical standpoint, Bitcoin has been forming this falling wedge. And as soon as BTC price action broke the resistance of this falling wedge, BTC literally skyrocketed. And now it seems like BTC forming yet another falling wedge. <laughs> Obviously, this is not a huge falling wedge this is not as big as comparing to the previous one but usually falling wedges represent a bullish sign and additionally btc price action already broke about the resistance of this falling wedge so it seems like uh, the only way from this point on is most likely upwards let's see let's move on here we have a Bitcoin dominance. Bitcoin got dominance currently at 54%. Yes, it was high. It was at around 56%. But when Ethereum spot ETF has been approved, Ethereum went up by well, like 20% in one single day. So from that point on, a Bitcoin dominance slightly declined. But it seems like since 2023, it has been gradually increasing. Yes, back then it was almost 40%. Now we are 54%. So within one year, one year and a half, a Bitcoin gain in dominance and it ate a couple of shares of cryptocurrency market. So I guess that's fantastic news for Bitcoin. Let's move on. Bitcoin fee regret index. Today we are at 73. At the same level, we were back yesterday at 73. But to be honest, it does not make too much sense because today Bitcoin price is relatively higher compared to yesterday but maybe bitcoin fear regret index will capture this increase probably tomorrow so if bitcoin will be above well, like seventy thousand dollars tomorrow most likely we might be even in extreme greed let's see let's move on huddle bitcoin at fifty thousand dollars huddle bitcoin at one million <laughs> huddle at zero dollars yes it's quite funny but to be honest guys for me, Bitcoin is more as a binary bet. Bitcoin is either going to be about a million or zero dollars. Zero dollars, it's very unlikely considering the fact that we have institutional adoption. We have Bitcoin spot ETFs um, approval across the globe. United States, China, now it's going to be Australia and many other countries. So it's unlikely to be zero. But if it's not zero, <laughs> there is a high chance it's going to be about one million dollars. We just need time. The only thing we need is time. Let's move on. State of Wisconsin revealed its own 
$162 million worth of Bitcoin through the BlackRock and Grayscale ETFs. This is 180 billion fund. I think it's just the entry point. That is using uh, this to a trial run, says Marquette University professor. Yes, states buying Bitcoin. <laughs> Obviously, that's very bullish. Let's move on. Just in Australia's first pot Bitcoin TF to go live tomorrow. Are you prepared? Well, maybe you should not be prepared because there is definitely not lots of hope coming from Australia. Just look what happened in China. China Bitcoin spot TFs was not successful. Maybe it will be in the future, but yes, I do not expect um, something similar to happen in Australia like it did in the United States. But look, who knows? They definitely gonna buy some Bitcoin, so that is definitely an additional demand. All right, guys, let's move on. Let me give you a quick update what happened Friday for Bitcoin spot ETFs inflow outflow. As we can see, as of Friday, BlackRock accumulated $169 million worth of Bitcoin, which probably would be the highest number in the past, well, like seven days. Um, Fidelity, not so much, only $5.9 million worth of PC. <laughs> Everything is more or less zero. And Grayscale sold $124 million worth of Bitcoin. That going to be probably the biggest uh, selling day for Grayscale in the past, I don't know, two, three weeks, something like that. But despite that, the net flow for Friday was still positive, $48 million, <laughs> actually exactly the same as it was the day before that on Thursday. So let's see what is going to happen Monday. I will give you an update tomorrow what is going to happen today because obviously data is not there yet because ETFs are buying Bitcoin as we speak. But let's see, I'm pretty sure it is it is going to be quite positive because BTC went up overnight by $2,000. So therefore, BlackRock accumulation, $16.6 .6 billion. Fidelity, $8.8 .8 billion. Uh, Bitwise almost two billion and ARC two point five billion dollars and Grayscale sold seventeen point nine billion dollars. It approaches to eighteen billion. Maybe today it's going to sell like hundred mil or maybe not, but it is going to happen. And therefore, the cumulative net flow will be thirteen point eight billion dollars. And I'm pretty sure that is another all-time high for Bitcoin spot ETFs. In fact, if you take a look at this chart, it represents historical Bitcoin holdings trend. And right now, all Bitcoin spot ETFs have roughly uh, 857,000 Bitcoin. What? That is insane number. So that would be well, like 58, 59 billion dollars. So indeed, it seems like it is a new all time high. But from technical standpoint, it seems like... Um, historical Bitcoin holding trend is forming this um, ascending triangle, which is indeed very bullish. Let's see if uh, this, I don't want to say price action, it's rather a trend will be able to break about the resistance is already <laughs> breaking. So yes, indeed quite bullish. Let's move on. Mexican billionaire Ricardo Salinas urges followers to buy Bitcoin as Nigerian Naira falls under a Satoshi. Let's take a look. Ricardo Salinas Plego, one of the wealthiest billionaires in Mexico, has urged his followers to purchase Bitcoin as a hedge against devaluation of the fiat currencies. Salinas Plego recommended purchasing Bitcoin in response to a social media post uh, reporting on the fall of the value of Nigerian Naira under a Satoshi. Yes, it seems like Nigeria trying to ban Bitcoin, they trying to diminish uh, people's power, but if you're there, you really want to get your hands on some Bitcoin. Not even there, all over the world, because uh, government devalue the currencies all over the world, and some countries devalue the currency faster than others. But overall, everybody should be owning Bitcoin. And lastly, let's take a look at this quick video where Plan B will give his update on Bitcoin stock to flow this month. Let's take a look. Welcome back to Plan B on YouTube. In this Bitcoin outlook, we discuss seven charts. And please subscribe to this channel because it really helps people find my content. First chart, 
Bitcoin stock to flow. Now, Bitcoin closed this month a little above $67,000. And it's the first red dot, the first month after the halving and a start of the new cycle. So, in my opinion, Bitcoin will pump uh, after the halving like it did last halving cycle in 2020 and the cycle before it in 2017 and also after the halving in 2012 and 2013. So I think we'll see a pump again and of course that's the core of the stock to flow model uh, but time will tell. So as you know I refitted the model the stock to flow model on five years of new data because the model was published uh, in March 2019 right here at the bottom of the bear market and now we're five years further down the line uh, so it, it, it makes sense to update and refit the model with, with this new data and the nice thing is the parameters didn't change because of this refit the power is still three stock to flow to the to the power of, of three and this is the only parameter that changed a little bit because that was uh, 0.4 and it's now 0.25. And that's because I disregarded the coins, the Satoshi coins from the stock. Uh, but yeah, that, that didn't do much really. And this makes the model much more simple. So this parameter changed because of that. But the main parameter, the power three didn't change. and more important the results didn't change so that, that that's very nice um last cycle still 50k next cycle the prediction is still half a million and the cycle after that is four million that didn't change at all the only thing that changed a little bit is the line is not wobbly anymore uh, why was it wobbly why is it straight now because right now i i calculate with the average price of a cycle and um, in the first model the 2019 model I calculated with the monthly stock to flow ratio and that is that changes every month and that makes this wobbly line but of course it doesn't change much the big change in stock to flow and and stock to flow model outcome is around the halvings so big jump around the halving in the model value and then a price of Bitcoin that shows a little bit of a lag, but it eventually uh, catches up with that model value. And that is exactly what happened last three halvings and what I expect will be happening, well, next year, actually. So <laughs> Plan B, as bullish as ever. Right now, he said he updated his Bitcoin stock to flow a little bit. It's not volatile anymore because he did well, like monthly or week. Oh, he did daily instead of monthly. So that is that. And he still believes that uh, Bitcoin will reach $500,000 this cycle. Uh, look, I hope it will reach 500k, but I am a bit skeptical. Additionally, here's another chart he posted on his uh, YouTube video. This chart represents Bitcoin market cycles and currently we are in this reddish dots. I think so far we've seen four reddish dots and each red dot represent uh, one week I believe. So whenever BTC is in this reddish dots it means that we are in the bull market. In fact right now we are in the beginning of the bull market. So according to plan B Bitcoin bull market continues like a clockwork let's see let's see all right guys let me know what do you guys think about plan b comment below subscribe and like this video